It has long been said that home is where you should feel your safest and most secure. A place where you can relax and be in your ultimate comfort zone. And for many of us, that is in fact our normal. But for some, like Redditor Blue Black Jupiter, home can quickly change from a place of happiness to a place of dread. My upstairs neighbor stalks me. I can't even begin to describe how unbelievable and frightening this situation is. It started shortly after I moved into my apartment on September 1st, 2020. My therapist picked up on the fact that I seemed uneasy and asked if I felt safe. At the time, I hadn't tuned into my surroundings much, but realized that she was right and I hadn't been relaxing. I'd soon learn why. Inexplicably, my neighbor above would follow me from room to room and hover over me. For example, if I'm in the bedroom, she will already be in the room above it. If I get up to go to the kitchen, she will tail behind seconds after. If I go back to my room, she will do the same, sometimes stomping. She's literally my shadow. For the first few months, she did this nearly every single time I got up to do something, even during the more intimate moments, like taking a shower or using the bathroom. Dumbfounded, I asked friends if they'd ever been able to hear their downstairs neighbor. I've never heard them in past places and can't hear those below me now. I took detailed notes for a week before realizing things weren't a coincidence. The first person I told was my therapist. She encouraged me to seek out an evaluation, and I did. Not having had a history of such illnesses, I never doubted my observations, but still wanted to rule out the onset of something like schizophrenia. I'm fine in that regard. It sounds crazy, but for the longest time, I've suspected there might be hidden cameras in my apartment. There have been too many things I've done that she's reacted to that wouldn't be possible without seeing me. And honestly, hidden camera crimes will become more frequent once people realize how easy they are to get on sites like Amazon. They are already an issue in places like South Korea. Why I think there's more to this. She never, ever leaves her apartment, and until May, she never appeared to have any visitors. Those visitors were some of the tenants on my floor. They moved out last week. Once I complained to the landlord in October, he kept it vague and not wanting to seem insane. He told me that maintenance was never able to get into her unit. He also said two people lived there and that one was unemployed. He said that he would talk to her in person, which I don't get as we were still in lockdown. The landlord then went MIA and hired a property manager. Her roommate secretly moved out last year. All of the tenants on her floor moved out by June. All units in the building are on September leases, with the exception of one. One of the tenants on her floor had a roommate who appeared to move out during the middle of the year. Someone left a bottle of bleach square on my doormat. This has racist connotations, and bleach or acid attacks are not uncommon in Europe. I suspect she might have done it. I cannot hear the tenants below me, and I could barely hear those next to me before they moved out. The only sounds I really hear from my upstairs neighbor are her stomping, the smoke alarm, and when she first turns on the shower. This isn't an insulation problem. I never got a signed copy of the lease. This has caused me a significant amount of fear and exacerbated my medical issues. I've lost months of work and have spent nearly a quarter of my lease living with my friends. I live very much in fear that this person could harm me as they are fixated on me 24 seven and never ever leave their apartment. This is an extremely strange situation and given how folks in my periphery have behaved, I believe someone knows something. I can't keep quiet about this any longer in fear that she might do this to someone else. 
OP starts off her post with concerns over her upstairs neighbor, potentially stalking her from within her own apartment. She goes on to say that seemingly every time that she walks around her apartment, her neighbor does the exact same thing just a few seconds later. Almost as if she is deliberately trying to be in the same room as her at all times. OP continues by saying that she spoke with her friends to get their thoughts on the subject and if they had ever experienced anything like this. As well as her therapist who encouraged OP to investigate more into it and see if there is truth to the neighbor potentially following her every move. OP also states that she was wanting to rule out the possibility of her having schizophrenia and says that she is fine in that regard. Continuing on, OP addresses the concerns that there could potentially be hidden cameras in her apartment and that there had been certain things OP had done that her neighbor reacted to that wouldn't have been possible if she didn't see her. Hidden cameras are seemingly becoming easier and easier to purchase online, and OP points this out as well, as the rise in people being recorded unknowingly. More information is given with things like her neighbor never leaving her apartment, her neighbor's roommate moving out in secret, and someone leaving a bottle of bleach on OP's doorstep, and OP suggesting that the bottle could have had a racial connotation to it with bleach or acid baths. As the post comes to an end, OP states the toll that this ordeal has been taking on her. She states that she has lost two months of work and has even been staying with friends of hers instead of sleeping at her own apartment, and that she is now fearing for her life that her neighbor wants to harm her and has become fixated on her every movement. From this first post, we can clearly tell that OP is in a very concerning situation and rightly seems to be worried for her own safety and privacy. Not being able to feel safe in the place that we call home is detrimental enough to cause anyone's life to start to crumble. And for OP, it seems she's already hit that point by the time of posting. OP didn't stay quiet for long though as she continued making several updates to her original post. She was also surprised by how many people began commenting on her post with advice on her situation, with some commenting. Please move. I haven't looked at the evidence, but regardless, you feel unsafe there. OP then made her first update. Thank you so much to everyone who responded. Feeling supported and validated has been overwhelming these last few hours. It's been a long road dealing with this and I'm not sure what happens from here. At the very least, it might expose a new way people are able to stalk others. On the surface, her actions seem comical, but her methods are worrisome. I also appreciate the skepticism from some posters because even through all of this, I have to maintain some as well, if only to preserve my sanity. I wasn't able to test for cameras last night as she stayed up as late as I did and I ended up falling asleep. I will try again tonight. My friend also just arrived this morning and I'll keep this thread updated. OP attached a video link to this first update. Here is that video. I recommend, if possible, put headphones on and turn up the volume. It can be tough to make out the different sounds without them.
Once OP posted that video, more comments began to flood in, with some being helpful, where others focused their attention towards OP. I've seen cases on this sub where people are obviously genuinely suffering some type of mental problem. Based on the video, I don't think this is the case at all. I've lived in flats before and have not once been able to hear the people below me, especially as you were moving rather quietly at some points, yet she still followed. I absolutely understand your concern of hidden cameras for this reason. If moving out isn't an option and you'd rather find evidence, you need to get looking. Check wall sockets, smoke detectors, any decor, cushions, everywhere you would think a camera could be hidden. A lot of cameras reflect light, so turn off all the lights, then search around with a flashlight or a phone's torch. It might take a while to do a deep search of your home, but it sounds worth it. It's concerning that she knows the room you've walked to despite how quiet you are sometimes. It's especially concerning that she's doing it in the first place. It sounds to me like she's got some kind of mental problem, especially if she never goes out, but instead spends her days stomping about to worry you. Inspect every single air vent, outlet, fire alarm, light, fan, anything mounted on a wall or in the apartment when you moved in that you didn't bring with you. Do what another user suggested with turning off the lights and using a flashlight to look for a reflection. If you can afford it, an RF signal detector should help you to find any hidden cameras. Lastly, if you have the ability to, move. And others were a little less understanding. The most likely scenario is that you are the issue. You have been living there for nearly a year, September to now. A normal person would put up with some issues for only a few weeks at best. Simply move out. If you find that the new neighbor is doing the same, go check yourself into a psych ward. Due to the overwhelming attention that OP was getting from her post, she made an update addressing what was going on. Thank you all once again for commenting. I'll try to get through as many comments as possible to help provide more info. My friend has been working at my place since this morning. I've largely stayed in my bedroom while she's been here in another room at her computer. We've noticed the following. When my friend was setting up her computer in the morning, my neighbor came above us briefly before walking away. When I left my apartment for a little over an hour, my friend said that she came above her, stomped for a bit, and then stayed mostly silent. She didn't follow my friend around, but my friend said that she was mostly at her desk and didn't really walk around. When I returned to my apartment, I took a shower. My friend and I heard my neighbor above near my bathroom as she stomped periodically throughout my shower. She's actually above me in my bedroom as I type this. Largely uneventful stuff, but we're keeping an eye on things. I've seen a few comments asking why I'm waiting until nighttime. Given some of the advice about detecting IR light, I figure waiting until it's dark as possible would be ideal. It's also quieter, so I can listen for any sounds. I'll update later once my friend and I do a search. OP now has a friend staying with her in the apartment. She goes on to say that while they did hear the neighbor periodically, nothing of huge importance seemed to happen. It mostly just appeared to be the same thing that OP had already been dealing with. When she moved into another room, the neighbor, unsurprisingly by this point, did the same a few seconds later. OP continued to monitor the activity and again made another update. My friend and I spent the last two hours removing light fixtures, checking outlets, small crevices, little holes in the wall, etc. We didn't find anything conclusive, but we will search again after dinner. We'll be in the apartment. We searched again and didn't find anything. Thank you all for your helpful comments regarding finding hidden cameras. I'll do one last check tomorrow, but still not sure what to make of this situation. OP and her friend finally went to check around her apartment for cameras, recording devices, or anything suspicious. Following advice she had received from comments, it was seemingly in vain as nothing of note was found. 
While frustrating, many could only sit and wait for any type of update to be made from OP. And a few days later, a final update was made. We didn't find anything, which I'll admit gives me some peace of mind. I know that it is an unbelievable scenario, so maintaining some skepticism is definitely key, but I have a few steps in mind I'll be pursuing. Once again, thank you all so much for your help, comments, and skepticism. If anything of note happens, I'll create a new thread to update RBI. Have a great week. week, week, week. As the final post was made, OP did express relief that she didn't find any cameras or recording equipment in her apartment. Although, on the other hand, that didn't exactly give closure either. As if nothing could be found in the apartment, then how exactly was the neighbor knowing where she was at all times? There were many who commented things such as wearing slippers around the apartment to be quiet when walking or confronting the neighbor directly about the situation something that OP did ultimately do, yet little came from it other than seemingly angering the neighbor. OP did make a lot of comments back to those offering advice, which made this post somewhat messy to keep track of, especially with all of the updates. The concerning part of this story for me though, didn't come from the neighbor. Instead, it came from numerous people commenting on the post. As the post continually became updated and with little to show in terms of a reason of how or why the neighbor would be stalking OP, some began to wonder if it was even actually happening. People began commenting on if OP was even being stalked or if it was all in her head and she was mistaking the neighbor for following her every move when in reality it was just her neighbor walking around her apartment and it sometimes matched where OP was in her own apartment. People began leaving comments like this. Why would your neighbor follow you if they had a camera in each room? Wouldn't they just watch the feed in one place? How big is the apartment? If it's massive, then it would be obvious that they're following your movements. If the apartment is a normal sized one, then it's going to be pretty hard to determine that they are following you. Having lived in loads of apartments, I have often worried if a certain noise is in a certain room because it's just too hard to pinpoint the noise. Are you sure the neighbor is not just living in the apartment and getting up from the toilet or going to make a cup of tea or just normal stuff? Not sure about the bleach, but you sound a bit paranoid to be honest. Two things. Firstly, you don't hear your downstairs neighbors, only upstairs. Ask anyone with a bit of life experience and they will all have stories of noisy upstairs neighbors and advise to always rent on the top floor. Secondly, your neighbor may or may not be stalking you, but currently you are 100% stalking them. Either way, move out for your own sanity and safety. I think OP is clearly paranoid. Either that or the entire thing was completely fabricated. Too much does not add up. For OP, no other post or update has been made concerning this. Going to her profile, she has made no other comment, post, or anything in over a year. This story can seemingly be two very different things. Either OP was in fact experiencing her neighbor watching her every move, or OP was paranoid about the entire thing that led to her avoiding home at all cost. I know that just because no cameras were found in her apartment, that it doesn't rule out that her neighbor couldn't be watching her. There are potentially numerous other ways that she could have successfully known OP's every move. But other than the video, there isn't much to go on from this. I am in no way saying that OP was in the wrong or making it all up in her head, but many commenting felt that she was. And this is why this post stood out to me. There is a lot of back and forth on this story, on those who are on OP's side and saying that it is absolutely the neighbor following her, while others are saying that OP is making it all up in her head. Whatever the case may be, I hope OP was able to leave the apartment complex and find a new place to live. 
Even if the situation were sorted out, it seems that too much has happened for OP to ever be comfortable there. Home should be where we all feel safe and secure. You take that away, and it can quickly change into a prison. Today's video is brought to you by Established Titles. Rarely do I get to collaborate with a company that actually combines something that is equally fun while simultaneously serving a great purpose, and Established Titles is one of those companies that nails both down easily. Established Titles are an ongoing project that allows you to buy land in Scotland, and in turn, Established Titles plants a tree with every order. The overall goal of this project is to preserve the picturesque woodlands and biodiversity of Scotland. And to add the cherry on top, when purchasing a plot of land from Scotland, you are now officially a lord or lady. And I do mean officially. You can change your name to have lord or lady on credit cards, plane tickets, and each purchase gives you a frame certificate with an official crest and plot number. Even more, once obtaining your established title, you can go to their website and search for your own plot of land and view it from the comfort of your own home. And for me personally, what I think is the coolest feature is that if you use my unique code upon purchase, then established titles will put your plot of land right next to mine. Therefore, if enough people use my link at checkout, we can theoretically create a cadaver kingdom, and that in and of itself is worth the asking price. Established Titles is running a big sale right now, plus if you use code cadaver, you get an additional 10% off. Go to establishedtitles.com forward slash cadaver to get your gifts now and help support the channel. Once again, use code cadaver at checkout to get an additional 10% off. Thanks again to Established Titles for supporting today's video. If you are an avid watcher of my channel, then you no doubt have a passion for true crime. I myself have been obsessed with it for well over a decade, and I have often found myself wondering how I would handle a situation if I were to be witnessing a crime. I like to think that I would do the noble and right thing, but then I wonder if the fear of the situation would cause me to panic or completely freeze up. The truth is, I don't think it's that easy to simply say what you would do and actually go through with it when faced with a situation that could potentially put our lives in danger. One night upon returning home, Reddit user Prolapse This found himself in a situation that he never imagined himself being in. Police didn't investigate, and it's been bothering me. At around 8.30, I arrived home from a quick trip to town to grab a beer. As I got out of my car, I could hear something, and I thought for a moment that I had left the TV on, and was hearing it from the outside. But as I walked to the front of my car and pressed the lock button on my remote, I realized that what I was hearing was screaming. I listened for a second thinking that it was somebody screwing around. But then the woman's voice screamed, no, stop, you're hurting me, you're killing me. And an adult male voice yelling something that I couldn't make out. There was a dog barking from the same direction, as well as a repeated thudding noise. I immediately dialed 911 and told the police. They could even hear the screaming in the background. They said that they'd send an officer to drive by, but an hour passed and nobody came. I watched for them on my security cameras. I pulled the footage from the only one that was set to record constantly. The camera on my back door only records when it detects a humanoid shape, so it caught me making a phone call and a little of the screaming in the background. The backyard camera caught it all, but it is unintelligible. 
due to the outdoor AC unit's noise. I cleaned up the audio as best I could, but I need advice on how to proceed. Prolapse This had found himself in a scenario that we only seem to see in mystery TV shows. To recap, OP returned home one night and as he got out of his car, he heard screaming coming from his neighbor's house. Fearing for what was happening, OP contacted the police and even they heard the screams while on the phone. Unfortunately, the police didn't show up at all. OP did manage, however, to capture the sounds on video from his backyard camera. This is that recording. Before I play it, as with the first post, I recommend you putting headphones on and turning up the volume as it is tough to hear at times. From this point, all OP could do was again contact police with what he heard and captured on his security camera and wait. The post made by OP got several comments from people telling him to let it go since he did his part to others urging him to go to the police with the recording and let them hear it. I would call again. If they don't come and check to try to find an abused woman, ask to speak to the supervisor. There is no excuse for not showing up, especially after the screams being audible on the 911 call. I guess the people saying let it go would not care if somebody called in their time of need. Some people do not realize abused women need help and sometimes they are too scared to get away. It happened to me. I can see why you were shaken up. I'm shaken just from the video. Since the police never showed up, I think what I would do is just keep my ears out. If it's hurt again, I'd call the cops, but I would make sure to remind them of your last call. I'm sorry you have to be involved at all, but thanks for being so compassionate. A lot of people are so hesitant to get involved in other people's personal business, but I think we can all hear that the poor woman needs some kind of help. Shortly after the original post was made, OP made an update. September 7th, I guess they finally had a reason to go out and check the property I was trying to tell them to go look at. There are sheriff's cars all over the place and cops in gloves walking in and out of this garage and one cop was throwing up in the front yard. I have a picture, but I can't add it to the update. OP stated that the police had swarmed on the house where the noises had been coming from. 
only this time, about two months had passed since the original phone call. Cops in gloves were walking in and out of the house, and even one cop was getting sick in the front yard. The mental picture that was made in my mind was disturbing, to say the very least, and I am sure all of you can imagine something very similar. There's also an aspect of fear with this whole story. It's scary enough to hear screams coming from a house at night, let alone hearing someone cry out for help. But for you to then see the police covering the area, it makes it real that what you, or in this case OP, heard was real and had potentially permanent consequences. For a while, this was all anyone heard of the post from OP. Many figured that this was going to be like many things on Reddit, where stories never have a full conclusion, or life simply happened and OP got distracted with it and forgot to give an update. However, for Prolapse this, he would come back with a shocking update a few months later. Welp, murder it is. I posted last year about coming home and hearing a female voice screaming for her life. I posted a video with the audio of the scream, and it got plenty of comments. About two months later, the house that it was coming from had sheriff's cars all around it. I found out that an elderly man had actually committed suicide, and that his son was the only person home and the person who reported that his father had shot himself. Fast forward to last week, I was sitting at home watching YouTube when I hear gunshots. I live in the country and that's common, so I didn't think anything of it. Turns out it was the sound of the son murdering his mother. He is trying to claim self-defense, but he is being charged with murder. I live next door and my security cameras caught the audio of the murder. It also captures the vehicle the son made his getaway in. I've had detectives in and out gathering video footage for the past week. This is a family annihilator. They are now looking at him for the murder of his father as well. The case has been reopened, and if they have now recognized that my calls and reports were actually real, two lies could have been saved. It's sad. That's the best way to describe this. Sad that even when shown actual evidence that a crime had occurred months before, with actual sounds of screams being heard on camera, that nothing was seemingly done to prevent this. While the screams that you heard earlier were not those of the actual killing, what was heard was an instance of domestic abuse taking place. The son, Tim Johnson, was attacking his mother physically, and those screams that came from the attack are what was recorded on OP's camera. Months later, like many instances of abuse, it increased, and sadly, ended with the life of a mother being cut short. Tonight, after investigators say he shot and killed his mom, it happened on Saturday night. We also have the 911 call where a man identifies himself as the woman's son, claiming she shot herself. You know that Tim Johnson the third is the man who's at the Highland County Jail tonight, and he faces one count of murder. So we're here live at the Claremont County Dispatch Center because a man named Tim Johnson called uh, called dispatch on Saturday night saying that his mother shot herself. The man uses the same name as the victim that authorities have told us. He also said it happened at the same address in Hillsboro. My name is Johnson. Tim Johnson. Yes, ma'am. Weekend, this man, Tim Johnson III, was arrested in the shooting death of his mother, Stephanie Cheney. Court documents say Johnson admitted to Highland County deputies he shot her at her home here on Hickory Trail in Hillsboro. The document also says Highland County deputies received a call from Claremont County deputies requesting a well being check on Cheney. He obtained this 911 call from Claremont County dispatch. A man named Tim Johnson called from this restaurant on 515 Liberty Street in Newtonsville. You believe that your mother shot? He obtained this 911 call from Claremont County dispatch. 
A man named Tim Johnson called from this restaurant on 515 Liberty Street in New York. The Sheriff's Office confirms their deputies did have contact with Johnson on Saturday night. Court documents say he told deputies he was Cheney's son and heard a gunshot come out of his bedroom. He went on to tell them he saw his mother was dead and left. I jumped in, jumped in the truck and ran. I'm sending an officer out to you, okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Deputies say in the document it appears Cheney was shot inside her home. It also says Johnson denies shooting his mom in the first interview, but admitted it during the second. When asked why he shot her, deputies say Johnson said, quote, she was going to attack me. And in the court documents, Johnson also says to detectives that he felt threatened by his mother because she always carried a pistol in his purse and he was just trying to scare her. We did go to the address of where the phone call happened from. It is a restaurant in Cole. While this case is still somewhat new, the most recent article I could find on it was from January of 2022, and it seems the trial has yet to begin, which doesn't come as a huge surprise. As stated by OP, the police are looking into Tim for the death of his father as well, instead of ruling it as it was originally seen as a it does seem too coincidental for Tim to have both his mother and father meet with practically the same end. It's unfortunate nothing could have been done from months prior when the post was originally made, when there was proof of violence occurring, and months later, it ended with the worst possible outcome. I wanted to include this one since it did have some form of closure or at the very least an answer to why the screams were going on. But at the same time, it seems all too often that the answers that we get to something are not always what we want to hear. Now we come to a story that has thrown me down a rabbit hole so deep that I almost scrapped even including it here and instead making an entire video on it. And honestly, I still might do that. But for now, let me tell you the story of when Redditor u slash its Kmart made a post on the RBI subreddit that created a storm of frenzied people desperately trying to figure out the meaning behind a peculiar picture. Any idea what's happening in this photo? Someone in a mom's group I am in on Facebook said someone that she knows found this in a book bought at Goodwill. She claims to have given it to the police. My first thought was that it's probably from a movie, but I can't find anything on Tenai. Thoughts? It looks like a guy is face down in water on the left with his feet bound and one on the right with a guy with his knees up tied to his body. Also, a shadow looks like a guy is holding a gun. The post, while brief, caused many in the subreddit to flock to the picture, examining every inch of it to figure out what they were looking at, and then trying to establish some connections to who exactly is in this photograph. The original post included this picture. From the rough version, it can be tough to make out much. However, thanks to several people on the post, they were able to clean up the image and give us much more to work with. The altered picture clearly shows what is assumed to be a man, bounded by both his hands and legs, in what looks like a narrow creek. Person A, as I will refer to them, also appears to be screaming or yelling or possibly crying out. The next subject, person B, is on their stomach, again with their hands and legs bound, and from my viewpoint, it appears they are lifting their head above the water. Person C, while only seeing their shadow, appears to be walking to an open car door. Some online have argued that this form is actually someone raising a gun, but I personally think that the silhouette is that of a car door, with the open space being the window. And then, in the lower left, person D. 
While we can only seemingly make out the top part of their head being visible, but in my opinion, it is definitely a person. They in fact, from the positioning, could be the person taking this eerie picture. But what do we know about it? Sure, it is a concerning photo. Could it be the final moments of two people's lives? Was this just a sick joke being played? While many would argue on that latter part, some have found a connection to a real-life missing person by the name of Teddy Franks, who, in 1986, during the Labor Day weekend, disappeared while in Middleton, Ohio. The story that has been told about the day of Teddy's disappearance goes as following. On that fateful afternoon, Teddy had gotten into an argument with his wife and left the house and walked over to see his sister, Rena. While there, Rena took Teddy to a nearby store to get cigarettes, and while approaching the store, Teddy saw someone, and before Rena could even get the car in park, Teddy opened the door and ran the opposite direction, turned a corner, and vanished. Since that day, Rena, Teddy's wife, seemingly nobody, has seen the young father since. Since its disappearance, Teddy has never had a job, his driver's license has never been renewed, and while the family still holds out hope, some have accepted that in their hearts they know that he is gone. How Teddy Franks relates to this picture, however, is that the photo was circulated online from a woman who found the picture in a Goodwill in Washington State, and from there the picture was sent to the family of Teddy Brooks, since many believe that he is the one in the photo. Person A. Even the family is unsure, with some not even believing it to be him. The frustrating truth is that since the image is of such poor quality, there is not enough to give any clear answer of the identity of the subjects in this photo. The family of a Middletown man missing for 35 years received a mysterious photo that might be connected to the case. And now they're on a mission to find out if the picture really is related to Teddy Frank's disappearance. Standing here in the area of Jackson Lane in Middletown, which is the area Teddy Frank's vanished from back in September of 1986. Ever since then, his siblings have been dedicated to try to find out what happened to him. And now they told me they want to know if this photo that was sent to them could be the key to cracking the case. We do want to caution you, though. We're going to show you this image, and it may be disturbing to some. Not knowing what happened to their brother, Teddy Franks, has haunted Michelle Lowry and Jody Franks for 35 years. It's hard. It is very, very hard every day. You know, you're wondering, is today going to be the day that they find somebody? Teddy vanished Labor Day weekend, 1986. That day, Michelle says Teddy got into a fight with his then wife and showed up at his sister Renee's home. He asked Renee to take him to a business along Jackson Lane for cigarettes. But when they got there, Michelle says Teddy saw someone else pull up and panicked. And he didn't even let her stop the car. He jumped out of the car, ran in back of Sitco gas station, and that was the last time anybody ever seen him. He's never had a job since, never had his driver's license renewed since. He didn't take his car. There have been numerous tips through the years. For the family, this photo has been the most mind-blowing. It's creepy. It's, it, it gives me chills. I was shocked. You know, I, I didn't know if it was him or not, even though it looked like the clothes similar to what he was wearing. A woman saw the picture shared on social media and sent it to Michelle. The original poster said she found it in a Goodwill in Washington State. I see um, a person who is tied up, they're laying face down in some water. I see another picture of another man with his hands behind his back tied up and his feet are tied and it looks like he is screaming. And then there is a shadow of what I'm guessing is another man, and it looks like um, he is holding some kind of gun. Internet sleuths have tried to come up with theories. They said it was like a clip from a movie, and some people say that um, it was a serial killer. I don't think he's alive, but I don't think that was him in that picture. So far, Teddy's sisters still don't have answers about the photo or Teddy. 
but they do have a strong suspicion that someone took their brother's life. They should go to jail. They should get the death penalty. They should rot in hell. So Teddy's sisters right now really are unsure about the photo. They said they do see a little resemblance, but they just don't know if it could be him anywhere in that picture. We did do a reverse Google image search ourselves, and all that comes up when you do that is just some links to some true crime forums. So not a lot of answers there either. Others have put up a debate that this is actually a shot from the movie Deliverance a film that was released back in 1972. And if you haven't seen the movie, it takes place in the wilderness of Georgia. And without giving anything away, four men come across some not so friendly mountain men and some very, very bad things happen. The only reason I am even mentioning this is because one Redditor commented that the subject in this picture could actually be a shot from the film and that person A is actually actor John Voight. And while yes, I can see a similarity there, I don't feel that there is enough to go off of it. I myself have seen the movie and I do not recall a scene like this taking place. Granted, they could have made one like this and they just didn't include it in the film, but for many, the Deliverance movie theory is simply just another theory to go into the mystery of this picture. And the theories do not stop there. I have come across some referencing that the person in the picture is actually Christopher Noel Lorette, who disappeared back in 1977 in Bruton, Alabama. Others claim it's a missing couple from Canada, Tanya Van and Jay Cook. And I feel that's not even scratching the surface of this mysterious photo that seems almost destined to live in the unknown. At least for now. I hope you enjoyed this installment into Reddit rabbit holes. I am very excited for the next entry in a couple of months. And as I was doing research into these stories, I came across some others that I cannot wait to share with all of you. In the meantime, leave your thoughts on the stories in the comments. And I am particularly interested in seeing what all of you have to say about that last entry. If this is your first time watching, I wanted to thank you, and while you're here, feel free to join our creepy community by hitting that subscribe button. And I will see all of you in the next video. Stay safe out there, friends. Good night.